Homelessness is a persistent problem in New Mexico. Street corners in cities like Albuquerque and Santa Fe are often populated by people asking for money or a warm place to sleep. In the state's largest city and in Bernalillo County, officials and advocates are rolling out new strategies to help people get off the streets. These include plans for a new full service shelter and more supportive housing. They also include connecting people facing homelessness with behavioral health services. But will these proposals work? And beyond answering the immediate question of shelter, how will they help people get into permanent stable housing? NMIF correspondent Megan Kamrick sits down with officials from Albuquerque and Bernalillo County, as well as nonprofit service providers helping the homeless. Thank you all for joining me today. I'm joined by Lisa Huval. She's Deputy Director of Family and Community Services, City of Albuquerque. Katrina Hotram Lopez is Director of Behavioral, the Behavioral Health Initiative in Bernalillo County. Danny Watley is Executive Director of The Rock at Noonday. And Greg Morris is Executive Director with HopeWorks. Thank you all for coming. Uh, Greg and Danny, you work with people experiencing homelessness every day. What do you see as the most urgent need right now to get people off the streets? It, the, the housing question is, is always there. I mean, it, that's, that has to be the primary uh, thing that we do is make sure that we can provide affordable housing uh, to reintegrate those folks back into society. Housing. Uh, housing is really the solution to homelessness and, uh, and also the wraparound services once we are able to get folks housed. What kinds of wraparound services? Uh, behavioral health services, um, case management services. Um, there's a variety of different things that we can provide to folks once they get into housing and, and, and also while they're visiting us at the shelter. And Lisa, the city of Albuquerque is asking the state legislature for about $28 million in capital outlay money. This would be for a 24-7 emergency shelter. How many people would be served there and what kinds of services would be offered? Yeah, I mean, we, we, the services question, we really plan to work with our community partners to figure out that exact question of what array of services would be there. We don't want to just build a shelter that's kind of over here and then we have all our other service providers over here and we want this to be part of a larger system that helps folks move from homelessness into housing, like uh, Danny and Greg are saying. So uh, possible services could be things like case management, um, assistance helping connect folks to employment and jobs, um, you know, help applying for benefits, th that sort of thing. And also the question of the size of the shelter, that's also something I think we need to work with our community to figure out. And part of that will depend on how much um, funds we're successful in securing from the state legislature. I, I thought I'd read that it was upwards of around 400 beds or? Yeah, so to take a step back for a moment, what we, we currently have um, what used to be the winter shelter, mm -hmm. called the winter shelter, about 20 miles from downtown Albuquerque. That has a capacity of about 450 beds. We know running that, um, that shelter year round uh, is not a sustainable long-term option, nor is it a good way to really help folks and get them connected to services in the long term. Because so, it's so far away. Because it's so far away. It's 20 miles, it's a, about a 40-minute 40 mi 40 drive, um, a quarter of the budget of keeping that shelter open year-round is the actual just the transportation costs um, and then once folks are out there it's challenging to connect them to services and medical care and behavioral health care and those sorts of things because it is so far outside of town so the plan is to bring eventually bring those 450 beds um, into town and we do estimate that the total capital cost to kind of construct that number of new beds in town would be about 28 million dollars who would offer the services would be existing providers mm -hmm. Um, once this new shelter is built, is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it will be an array of working with existing providers to come on site and provide services that they're the experts in providing, as well as looking at where are their gaps, like where do, where do we not have enough providers uh, to provide certain types of services and, um, you know, looking and filling those gaps. There's a, a lot of requests for money this year yes. at the legislature, yeah. including major asks for education funding. So how confident are you the legislature will grant this? I think I'm confident that we will get some state capital outlay funding from the legislature. I don't know the exact dollar amount. You know, the full request is $28 million. I think there's a lot of recognition from our legislators um, up in Santa Fe, particularly those representing the Albuquerque area, that we are experiencing a homelessness crisis right now and that we need to do something, that it's urgent, that the time is now. Um, so I think we have a lot of support for this request. What would happen if you don't get up? 
Well, we don't. Well, we will look at other um, other options for funding the shelter. We are also um, working on securing general obligation bonds, which are local capital dollars. Um, so we are, um, have a request in to or the, when the mayor put his uh, geo bond package together. There was a request for seven million dollars for the shelter, and now City Council is working on that request. Um, and so we'll see what comes what comes out of City Council. This is capital outlay money. So what about the cost to operate, operate the shelter? Right. What would that be? Where would it come from? Well, keep in mind we are keeping what used to be our winter shelter open year round, mm -hmm. and so that cost four million dollars to keep that shelter open year round, or between four and four and a half million to keep that shelter open year round. So the long-term plan is to not keep running the, the West Side Shelter anymore. So we, in a sense, we have identified funds in our budget mm -hmm. to um, operate an emergency shelter. So hopefully we'll, part of it will be just transferring those funds to the operation of a new shelter. Um, do you have a location yet? We do not. Okay. Uh, I know that last fall your department had laid out eight recommendations mm -hmm. to address homelessness mm -hmm. and the behavioral health crisis. Those included three to four smaller mm -hmm. emergency mm -hmm. shelters dispersed around the community. And I know a lot of cities have gone away from these big centralized right. shelters. Right. So why did Albuquerque's plan <clears throat> shift to yeah. this one big shelter? So I have to say it hasn't shifted to one big shelter. What, are, what we're trying to do is we know we're not going to build three to four shelters simultaneously. So we have to start with a shelter. And we want to make sure that that first shelter is in a centrally located spot that folks can easily get in, get to, that's um, easily accessible to law enforcement if there are first responders. So if they're working with someone who's experiencing homelessness who wants to come into a shelter, that it's easy to bring that person to the shelter. So we're really focused on getting this first shelter built. Um, and making that successful and building a model for our community that works really well. Um, it doesn't preclude the possibility of other shelters down the road. Katrina, you direct the behavioral health initiative with Bernalillo County. So talk about how behavioral health intersects with homelessness. It, here in New Mexico. There's a lot of intersection um, with homelessness and behavioral health issues and um, so that's one of the reasons why we have partners and our partners are really sitting around the table today which is great. Um, the behavioral health initiative has um, really thought about homelessness and um, housing as a continuum and so we've thought about everything from transitional living to scattered site to um, single site and really everything that we're talking about here is gradually increasing the the needs for these clients. So transitional living would be people who are more independent, who wouldn't need so much case management, who need a hand up, maybe some management and funds and, mm -hmm. and assistance. Scattered site would need more case management, more services, and our single site, which we're partnering with the city on, um, is, is something where we're going to take more um, intense individuals who need more 24-hour supervision that can stay in their own facility on one site and have services offered to them on that site. So we believe in that continuum of service of care and that's what we believe is lacking here in Bernalillo County. What is, talk more about what is the county's focus on addressing homelessness right now and how does that intersect with what the city is planning to do? So we focus on, on homelessness in terms of Bernalillo County in terms of housing the individuals with behavioral health issues mm -hmm. and we've actually focused on certain populations so we are looking at the frequent utilizers that are going in and out of the jail or in and out of the emergency rooms and with our thought that if we housed these individuals and provided the wraparound services that Greg talked about that we'd be able to stabilize and maybe un unbottleneck some of the, the problems that are happening over at MDC or in the emergency rooms and allow more people to have access to services and so we're focused on those frequent utilizers that are just unstable in that community with the thought that if we can stabilize them, that more people can have access in the community to the services that they need. And you focused on veterans as well. We are focusing on, on veterans. So um, at the upcoming Bernalillo County Commission, we are going to be focusing on veterans and uh, working with our um, partners in Bernalillo County, our, our housing um, department, and focusing on, on VASH vouchers, or, which are veteran vouchers and their families. And we are looking at uh, proposing another new a single site 
um, supportive housing model, which would um, look at addressing veterans with behavioral health issues, and then on top of that, um, merge that with behavioral health vouchers to serve that population, not just the individual, but their families as well. If we follow through with the sort of one large shelter, um, what kind of challenges might that present for people who suffer from mental illness and are on the street? Would, would they go to a big shelter like that? So I think it depends. It depends on the person. And I think really what we're talking about is giving um, the individual options. And so I think what we're really looking at is you've got the emergency room as an option, and we want to cut that down yeah. definitely. <laughs> but we've got mats as an option too. And what that is? That's our Metropolitan <coughs> Assessment and Treatment Services. And that's on Zuni in San Mateo. It's a county-run facility for, um, for substance abuse treatment. And mm -hmm. we're expanding those types of programs. We've got then the, the shelter. But I also want to recognize that that is not the only shelter in town. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's other shelters um, that, that they can access to and that, that are also smaller. And I think you're hearing that the, the city is recognizing that having more shelters and maybe smaller ones is the way to go eventually around the community, which is probably um, safer for our community. But I think even um, when we went and saw other models that were a larger site shelters, their recommendations to us was not to necessarily have them stay there day after day if that's possible mm. but link them to services so that we can get them back into the community and stabilized with supports and so no matter what model we choose I think it's really important to support a model where we're going out and supporting the clients no matter where they are and meeting them where they are so we can get them the right supports at the right time. Yeah, I just want to uh, really reiterate what Katrina is saying. I mean, any shelter, large or small, its function should be to move folks from, to help folks move from homelessness to housing as quickly as possible. So services would be focused on what do folks need to obtain permanent housing? And for each individual or family, that would look different, but that has to be the absolute core of the model for this to really be part of a larger system of addressing homelessness in our community. Danny, I know that uh, you provide emergency services for folks experiencing homelessness, food boxes, showers, laundry, and um, I was curious, as you talk to them, do you think we're headed in the right direction with some of these initiatives? Yeah, I think the, the larger the shelter is, in my opinion, is, is not the way to go. The smaller shelters, I think that all of the providers uh, in the city would support uh, because the, the focus, uh, they could have focused treatment at those places. Uh, and this, this is the first that I'm hearing about actually being able to build those uh, because we... Build I, the we, smaller shelters? Build the shelter. Mm -hmm. But we thought that all the eggs were going in one basket and we were certainly not happy with that because we didn't think, again, that once, once the weather turns warmer uh, that a 400-bed facility will would be very, uh, you know, efficient. Uh, the Why cost, is that? Well, a, a lot of our folks will decide to, to just sleep outside if the weather's not bad. Okay. Uh, now there there are other issues there also the uh, the impact on on a single neighborhood for a large facility like that uh, we think that it would take it's going to take away uh, dollars from mm. uh, from housing vouchers and being able to I mean 28 million dollars in housing vouchers can you imagine uh, what that would do to our you know our homeless population not saying that you shouldn't build a shelter a large shelter. <laughs> But $28 million was, for us, you know, for me personally, was, I thought was, was uh, more than, than we should spend on a, on, on a shelter that size. Why do people resist going to shelters? Um, how can we address those? And could an emergency shelter address some of those concerns? It, the structure is normally it. A lot of our folks, you know, don't uh, operate with structure in their lives. Uh, and so they, uh, those that are, have alcohol or drug issues will not go to the shelter for the most part. Uh, they, those that have mental health issues, for the most part, will avoid those. Which is those. a big chunk it is. of who's it on is. the street. And okay. I, I'm the co-chair of the Mental Health Response and Advisory Committee with uh, Rick Miera, uh, and that's a you know uh, that's one of the huge issues that we actually have in the city is is not having uh, that mental health facility uh, that can uh, can focus on the needs of those individuals. The jail's doing a great job. <laughs> uh, there have been some changes there. I mean, you ask people all the time, you know, what's the, the largest mental health treatment facility in the, in the county or in the state, and it's, it's our jail. Uh, and, and that's unfortunate, but... You that's know, sadly true in a lot of cities. It is, it is, there's no doubt. Mm -hmm. but, but again, it's, it's one where I think the, the smaller, scattered shelters 
would just be better not only for the homeless but for the community at, you know, in, at large. And I, I just want to add, you know, I think that, that uh, you know, shelter is important, and I think the reason why it's important is because we can't house people fast mm -hmm. enough. Uh, <laughs> so we do have a need for more overnight shelter capacity, but, I mean, with, with the population that we're talking about, um, housing is really the stabilizing factor, and it's much, much easier to, to stabilize folks and to bring services to them uh, than to have the neighborhood impact of, of a large shelter or smaller shelters. But we do need more shelter capacity. Um, but what I would love to see at, at all levels of government, state uh, and local governments, just in alignment on we need to systematically build more permanent supportive housing. I think the single site project is a great model. It's worked in other cities that have um, that have made, made any meaningful progress on reducing street homelessness. Uh, the sing, single site housing is, you know, the, the project that Katrina was referring to. This will be the first of its kind in New Mexico. So I, I, I think seeing more of these kinds of projects roll out is, is where we're going to really make a difference uh, in New Mexico. As you referred to, I think Katrina, um, the city has been following a housing first model as well mm -hmm. and UNM did an evaluation of that the mm -hmm. heading home program and found it saved the city money mm -hmm. it's doing what you explain like going the people who are the the um, frequent flyers is the slang term <laughs> that are using <laughs> ERs right. a high lot. utilizers yeah yeah high yeah. utilizers and getting them housed and then getting them services mm -hmm. once they're safe mm -hmm. I'm, is are we moving away from that with the larger shelter? Like, how do we balance yeah. uh, where the resources really, are going? I don't feel the city is moving away from a housing first approach or model at all. The multi pronged strategy that the city released last fall really recognized the need for more emergency shelter beds and also the need for more affordable housing for people experiencing homelessness. So it's really, we need both, both those things. Um, and, you know, the, the need for more emergency shelter is because, as Greg points out, we know we're not going to house any, everybody tomorrow who's experiencing homelessness. And so in the meantime, we do need, we have a responsibility as a community to provide safe and dignified uh, shelter for folks so that they can be safe and warm and kind of have an access point to other services that can help them exit homelessness. But I totally agree if we build a shelter and call it a day, then we have failed as a community to really address the underlying issue, which is housing. I mean, folks are homeless because they don't have a place to live. And the solution to that is to provide high quality, affordable housing for folks with very low incomes. So we have a responsibility to meet that need as well. I totally agree with Greg, the single site project that we have partnered with the county and HopeWorks on is really exciting. That is a model for helping folks who are experiencing homelessness with very serious behavioral health disabilities stay housed. So these are, many of these, I think the folks that will ultimately end up being housed are probably folks who have been housed at one point or another, but haven't been able to maintain that housing. And this is a different model that will really work. So I think the city is fully committed to those kinds of projects as well in order to really address our underlying issue. Well, in addition to that, I'd like to also say that um, the county has been working diligently on a crisis um, triage center. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we, we will be rolling out soon um, our partnership with the University of New Mexico Hospital and what we'll be doing on the campus of MATS, our Metropolitan Assessment and Treatment Services. And um, since we're limited by federal law to 16 beds for crisis triage stabilization. We so that's people who are in crisis, they can, instead of going to the MDC or, or know, Yeah, or going to the emergency mm -hmm, room. They can come to They can room. actually come to us or the hospitals can refer them to us because they didn't quite meet criteria for inpatient psychiatric care. And so we are um, actively working on that, and we actually hope to be licensed by the spring and have something open with those 16 beds. So I think some of these pieces are starting to come together. And for on that behavioral health piece, we're always asking what's next. And so if you're homeless and we've stabilized you, but you don't have your, your after your 14 day stay with us, mm -hmm. you don't have the what next mm -hmm. and you're going to a shelter, then I'm not sure how safe and secure that was for us or how right. effective that was. Right. And so we're looking at those permanent supportive housing or the single site housing models in order to maintain that so we have a healthier community overall. Well, I want to thank you all for talking about this. We'll yeah. continue this discussion on the web. Thank you for, we'll, we'll continue talking about this, no doubt, as we go forward. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.